Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today I am taking a look at a small Bluetooth enabled amplifier that I wanted for my workshop. I had an old pair of 8 ohm speakers so I did not want to invest in a expensive new Bluetooth speaker just for that. So I figured let's check eBay and I found this cheap 2x50 watt Bluetooth uh, amplifier. And as you can see there's also alternatives uh, with different cases or not. And price ranges, yeah, from what I found, six dollars up to twelve dollars for the most expensive, and they are basically exactly the same. So watch out for the price. Now, what do we get for six dollars? We get a acrylic enclosure, uh, some standoff or what do you call the extended buttons here, um, and I'm not sure why, but where was that? You get these magnetic feet. Um, yeah, that's probably great on an amplifier. It also has two heat sinks that uh, comes along with it. If we go down here, this is all you get for a manual um, status indicator for the Bluetooth, uh, power input, how to connect the speakers, and there are some dip switches, uh, how to set that for the gain output of the amplifier. Now here we can see the chip is the TDA7492P and the Bluetooth uh, chip is the CSR8635. So let's check those out. Now here we can see that the um, chip itself is only rated for 2 times 24, uh, 25 watt. And why do they promote this as 2 times 50 watt then? Let's check out the uh, maximum ratings and the THD measurements. Now if we look at the absolute maximum ratings, we can see this is specified up to 30 volt DC. This amplifier will just, as we can see here, supply voltage 8 to 60 volt uh, DC. That the output power will just go up with the input voltage, but the power dissipated from the chip itself is also much higher when you have a higher input voltage. But what good is 50 watt if that sounds yeah, terrible. If we take a look at the um, THD uh, measurements here, 8 ohm load at 20 volt DC. We can see that for having 1% THD, and that is still pretty high for a digital amplifier, that uh, if we input 20 volts, we are up at some 21 output uh, power, 21 watt output power that's not even near the specified 25 watt here you are at THD at 10 percent so now imagine if you extrapolate this graph out to the edge around here that's probably around uh, 26 28 volt dc and we can see the curve just moves up here we are up around yeah the 50 watt maybe but that THD level that's just going to be extremely high. I'm pretty sure that will sound awful. So let's uh, check out the Bluetooth chip. Now this is a Qualcomm uh, chip and as we can see here it targets the mid-range stereo speakers and headsets. So I assume the Bluetooth uh, chip here is quite good quality. Whereas if we go back to the amplifier chip we can see it was targeted for LCD TVs and monitors so that is probably yeah in the range of something like 40 to 50 inch TVs so that would probably do okay but let's get it put together this is the package that it came in um, only had a single other bubble wrap um, envelope so at least the um, board itself is in a anti-static bag has a power connector And then there's the acrylic chassis. Now this is not exactly acrylic, that's not even film on it, is it? Okay, that is film. Okay, so that is, after all, regular acrylic. So, you can see here, that is pretty nice. 
So there was the two heat sinks, uh, different sizes, and some standoffs, the buttons. Also seems to be some extra buttons as well. Wonder if I have to desolder the existing to put these on, or something like that. That could be. Okay, that does not work. Okay, so they have to be like car conical inside to actually grab down the button, but <laughs> half of these uh, is simply too, uh, too large diameter on the inside. Okay, that's pretty crap. Also, these should have been uh, magnetic feet, but these are just plastic standoffs. So, let's see what we have inside the static, anti-static bag here. So, that's it. We have the, um, the Bluetooth chip uh, with the antenna on. We have the input jack, if I want to use a mini jack uh, input. Power on, power off, maybe. Speaker connectors, power connector. And the yeah, previous volume up and such. Not sure what I do here. Maybe I just keep it like this. Or I can control it, everything over the Bluetooth. Now, then, then there is these. Um, how on earth am I supposed to mount these? They got nothing. Uh, and it sits snug fit up against the electrolytic capacitors, that's just shit design. Then they want one here on the back side. They actually expose the wires to uh, make for heat transfer as the chip itself has its heat sink on the back side. So that has to go on there and then just hope that it doesn't short circuit anything. Mm. Seems a little flimsy, but I'm not going to push this anywhere near, yeah, even 25 watts, so I'll bear with that. So just to try out the Bluetooth connectivity, I have here 12 volt DC, and let's just hook that up. And I have my phone here looking for a new Bluetooth um, devices. So now it blinks, not quite sure what what's happening here. Oh. Shinru Audio. So now it's pairing. And it's connected to media sound. So up here in the left corner and right corner, I have my old homemade speakers came with the house when we bought it. The little amplifier sits over here in a big wire mess, just as hi-fi as it should be. See, it sits right there. Beautiful. Let's just let's get a good clean look at that nice Bluetooth indicator. So let's just try to turn it on. Maybe it explodes. Okay. That's some kind of a welcome sound. Nice, there's already some noise in it. Maybe it's picking up some uh, phone noise. Not sure uh, what that a bit of flickering was. But let's see if we connect to it. It's connected to my phone right now. So let's play some audio. <laughs> well now, oh, we that's call loud. this the act of mating. Several other very important differences between human beings and animals that you should know about.
there's clearly some noise in my left speaker that's very annoying. Maybe you can hear it here. Hmm. Seems to come from the phone. The IC is cold to the touch after playing some music, so that's uh, still doing great. But that is really picking up some noise from my phone. It does, however, sound a little uh, weird. Uh, it doesn't sound uh, very good, but I'm not quite sure if that's because I'm only feeding it 12 volt DC, uh, as that small. Um, yeah, how much can that really supply? Uh, it's the two amps at 12 volt DC. So maybe that's far from enough for it to. Uh, Wow, that was a test of this little 2x24, 25 watt amplifier. Um, and while I only tested this with the 12 volt DC, I did try to use a old uh, ThinkPad uh, laptop uh, charger here for 16 volt uh, DC. Uh, but that unfortunately blew up and actually took out the, the mains fuse to my workshop, so I decided to go inside again uh, but it does work after all still um, there is one thing that I do not like about this amplifier it's not that yeah the quality of the sound that uh, that is what it is um, but when you turn this on it starts up at 75 percent volume so it simply just starts blasting out music as loud as is possible can and that's even with the dip switches set for the lowest gain so it doesn't remember the volume uh, level that you set the last time you turned it off. And that sucks pretty hard. So, until next time, see ya.